Hello. Back in 1986, Britain was gripped with football fever during the Mexico World Cup as every schoolboy desperately tried to get hold of a Kinder Egg containing a toy version of the mascot PK. Any remaining pocket money was spent on ZX Spectrum budget games costing £1.99, and the most popular of those games was Ninja Master, published by Firebird as part of their Budget Silver Range series. It was written by Tron Software, a group of Swedish programmers with a company name just begging for a copyright lawsuit. Ninja Master was a bit of an oddity. The cover clearly implies that the game contains exciting dual-bladed fights against Conan the Barbarian, when in fact it's a ninja-themed version of Hypersports with only four events. Oh, go on then, let's have a quick look at it. The first event involves correctly timing bizarrely effeminate kicks and punches to deflect the world's slowest arrows, which are being fired at you by some off-screen bastard. The second event requires you to frantically tap keys in order to make a little power arrow go over a line before the time runs out, because at that point the ninja chops a plank of wood and breaks his hand if you haven't met that goal. The third and by far the most difficult event has our beloved ninja trying to knock deformed shuriken out of the air with a sword. In Egypt, for some reason. Finally, we reach the fourth event, which is less like a Spectrum game and more like a child's first programming project for a mobile phone. All you have to do is tap a key when a tube thing flies directly over the ninja, and he apparently spits a blow dart at it or something. Now, Ninja Master isn't a terrible game. I mean, it's barely animated rubbish, but it isn't terrible. You can actually have a bit of fun with the reaction tests and trying to beat your previous high scores. Its most memorable feature is its strange sound effects, utilising sampled speech, which was rare at the time. If your ninja does something right, he shouts... If he gets hurt, he shouts... And if you qualify for an event, you get treated to several seconds of white noise masquerading as the applause of the crowd. <coughs> Lovely. Now, despite not being very good, Ninja Master came straight in at number four in the Spectrum game sales chart. You know what that means? Inevitable sequel! This is where the terrible bit comes in. Fourteen months after the release of Ninja Master, Tron Software spewed out Oriental Hero, a scrolling beat-em-up that tells the story of what the ninja did after winning at the Ninja Olympics in the first game. The cassette inlay gives a rubbish plot about our hero travelling to Outer Mongolia to challenge Zerwin the Wizard for the title of Supreme Oriental Combat Master. But before he can punch Zerwin in the knackers, he has to defeat three sub-bosses, a snake, a robot, and a thinly disguised Dolph Lundgren from Rocky IV. I am not making this up. Leaving aside the crapulent storyline, we need to take issue with the name. Oriental Hero was clearly written to cash in on the success of Ninja Master, yet completely omits the word ninja from the title, thus providing no obvious link. And this was during a period when games publishers would shoehorn the word ninja into a game's title, even if it had nothing to do with ninjas at all. Instead, we get the rubbish, outdated term Oriental, which vaguely means to do with South or East Asia. In fact, the term is so vague and lazy that in America and Canada, it can be considered as racist abuse when applied to a person. I should point out that it's not considered offensive in the UK, so Tron Software weren't racists. They were just really bad at designing games. Next, I'd like to point the finger of ridicule at the game's loading screen. You would be watching this for several minutes whilst the Spectrum read data from its cassette deck. Just look at the ninja's eyes. That's the look of a very bored and tired man, somebody who is thoroughly sick of what he's doing, who is wishing he was anywhere else. And the game hasn't even started yet. And when it does start, we are treated to this screen and this music. This may be the only game music in history that seems to be constantly interrupted by a neighbour banging on the wall to try and get the music to stop. Also, the wizard appears to be holding a blue dildo. Anyway, time to see what the game's actually like. Okay, keys sorted, let's go! Beware of Cobra India. Weapon, teeth! Marvellous. Looks like a moth. Right, let's... What the bloody hell happened there?! What?! Was it... World's fastest paper aeroplane just wiped me out in, like, less than a second. 
Try again, right. Oh, there's oh yeah, you got rid of him. Oh no, oh, not another one of those. Come on. What's that weird ticking noise as I'm going along? Is that supposed to be uh, footsteps or something? Right. Oh, right. I'm ready this time. Let's try some moves. Kick, kick, duck, levitate, levitate more. Oh, I can do a flying kick. That could be useful. Right. Let's go. Dun 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 dun. Oh, nothing happening this time. Um, bum bum bum. Oh, blow, kick. Ah, take that. And oh. Oh. Well, and that's it. Great. Kicked a bloke once. He didn't like it, so he stabbed me. Right. I'm going to go off and practice this game for a while, <laughs> and then have another go. Well, I've had a few goes, but I haven't got any better at it because the game seems to be virtually impossible. Anyway, let's have another go for the look of it. Yeah, but we're of Cobra India. Big silly moth, we know. 300 points. Just what you want. Right. Wonder, 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 wonder. Oh, Dracula bloke. Yay! You got one. Duck, no! Just so fast, you can't do anything about it. Right. Um, ah, bloke, right. Kick. And again. Oh, come on, I got him first. Leave it out. Bloody hell, is the collision detection off? Or you've got to be so precise in the timing? I don't know. Oh, this is terrible. Right. Wonder, wonder. Here again. Ah, oh, and you can't fly and kick him. I thought maybe I could do sort of an impressive ending there, but nope. It is merely an ending. As you may have noticed, the game is so difficult that it's basically unplayable, and we shall therefore never see the endgame fight between the ninja and Zerwin the wizard. But we shall not be beaten! By using the power of cheating, we can get to the end and witness the climactic battle for the title of Supreme Oriental Combat Master. There are no words. Let's have a quick look at what the big three Spectrum magazines made of Oriental Hero. The rubbish Sinclair user couldn't be asked with it, so just described it in a single sentence as being so fast that winning is a matter of luck, and gave it a seemingly random 4 out of 10. The entertaining but no good at reviewing games, your Sinclair, lived up to that description by giving it 6 out of 10 and saying there's nothing much wrong with it. Tellingly, the criticism is contained entirely in a short paragraph that gives no specific gameplay information whatsoever, so it's possible the reviewer just took a quick look at it and never actually played it properly. Can't say I blame him. The serious-minded and comprehensive Crash magazine had three separate people review each game. One gave it 24% and described it as having rubbish gameplay and no lasting appeal. One accurately said that wherever, whatever you do, you get killed before realising it, and yet inexplicably gave it 52%. The other gave it 15% and described it as totally unplayable. That provided an average score of 30%, inflated by the idiot in the middle. So what happened to the companies involved with Oriental Hero? Firebird continued publishing budget games until it was bought out by Microprose in 1989, who used the name for a bit before phasing it out. Tron Software, on the other hand, were never heard from again. In fact, they only ever wrote two games. Ninja Master and Oriental Hero. That is their legacy, and that in itself is a fitting punishment. Will you keep the bloody noise down? I am trying to sleep in here!